Hey guys, Trif Quigley here today with, and welcome to the Expanse book discussion slash ramble. So I've just done the rambling, and I just realised I was everywhere talking about the book. I was just jumping plot point to plot point. I had no, there was no like, there's no organisation to what I'm talking about. So this is the first time I've ever done a book group, that book discussion. So I saw it was everywhere, and when I read book, when I was listening to book one of the Expanse, I didn't really take down notes with book two. I'm putting down notes and stuff. Um, so hopefully in book two discussion, I actually have a bit more cohesive cohesiveness but sorry if it's just me but basically this is just going to be me rambling for about 30 minutes so hopefully you can deal with that and i hope you enjoy um but yeah it's just me giving my thoughts about how much i love it maybe comparing a bit of the me comparing a bit of the book to tv show talking about certain plot points in the show but it's very rambly i'm just i'm going to try and edit it in a way so it feels a bit more in row what i'm talking about but i am just jumping about with plot points to plot points so hopefully you guys don't mind and you actually enjoy the video if you do let me know feedback of um, how I can improve this. Like I say, I don't really normally discuss books. The reason I'm going to call this discussion ramble because this is not a review. Because if it was a review, it would be a lot more short, sweet, cutting out all the fat. This is just basically me talking uh, freely about the show. And I think it's a very, it's, it's, it's genuine how I'm talking, but I do feel like if you was watching this, it's just like... Hey, you all right, guys? Trifle question here today. We're back with a new type of video. And that is just me to discuss book one of The Expanse, Leviathan's Wakes. So you may or may not know, I react to the TV series on my channel. Um, I'm on season three, episode seven. About to watch another episode today. I absolutely love the TV show. I think it's fantastic. It's one of my favourite TV shows already. I got into it enough that I actually want to check out the audiobook. So that work, I tend to have, I've started listening to the audiobooks and I've just finished book one and just started book two show. So there will be some TV show comparisons here. Um, as I did watch TV show first and then read the books. Roughly where I want to start is I st I'll start with um, the, the narrator, Jeff Jefferson. He did a fantastic job. I really enjoyed his narration of the books. I will say my only flaw with him is a lot of his vo a lot of his character voices sound very similar for different characters. But so far into book two, his range has increased massively and there's a lot more variation between the voices. I just think like some of the voices in book one, they were a bit too close. But in book two, he's doing a fantastic job, especially the Avasarala book. I just want to talk about probably some of the changes they made um, from the book TV shows and how I appreciate them differently. So one of the big benefits of it being book, get the first person perspective of all the characters. So we get to see their inner thoughts, what all characters are thinking. And the characters that really benefit from this are Miller and Holden. Miller especially. Miller in the book is my favourite character. In the TV show, my favourite character is Amos. I really prefer Miller in the books. I think he... He just makes more sense as a character. You really do you know because you get his inner thought. Really get to see his point of view and how much he loved Julie. And if you don't re in the TV series, it's hard to put. You realize how much he likes likes Julie, but in the in the in the books, you really get to see the visions, how much he thinks about her, how much he looks into her life, every single thought thought process he has, so you truly understand his character and what he's thinking at times. I think that's one of the big benefits of the books, and it turned Miller into one of my favourite characters of book one. One of the other big bonuses of having in inner thoughts is, is that you get to know more what's going on in the world, what people are thinking, and the way I like, one thing I will give the show, I think the best, I think, I'm glad they introduced Vassarala in the, sh in the TV show in season one, because in the TV show, you obviously can't get uh, people's inner thoughts. So Avasarala in season one technically covers all those points. So like a lot of the a lot of the news in the world you get from characters' thoughts, the news, other characters in the show, like um, other factions in the show. Like we instead of uh, focusing on Earth, you get you meet UN ships and stuff on route. So like, I think when Holden's chasing after Eros, there's a UN ship alongside them. Whereas in the TV show, it's sort of on. Earth. I have one thing I absolutely love about it is that you both mediums are so, the same medium and they follow the same story, but they do enough changes for you to like enjoy both of them. Um, at the start of the book starts off with Julie, the prologue. I absolutely love the prologue um, with Julie. Uh, the depth that the book goes into it really immerses you damn well, like, especially like when it was just going on how she was drinking stale water out of suits. How it goes into how she was shitting and the sort of situation she was in. The, the, the hearing the screams of her friends yes you get that in a tv show but when the when the narrator when the audio when the narrator's explaining it to you you, just, you hear the screams and the screens suddenly stop and then it's the whole ship goes silent those things have really immerse you especially when you listen to an audio book it's just the immersion of the books is absolutely amazing so the immersion because of the first person's perspective you really get immersed and i'm glad book one only follows two characters so it follows miller and holden i'm glad it mainly just follows those two um as they're both, both very solid characters in their own right and it doesn't make 
I think I like how it, it just eases you in the story just following two people and there's a lot to the world and I think as the second book's already shown it follows a lot more characters and I think like just for the start the prologue I found fantastic you really got to feel sort of situations Julian I actually enjoy Judy's character a bit more quite a bit more in the books obviously I don't know they just focus on her a bit more and you just sort of see the situation she's in I think the reason I like me a little Julie more is because you get Miller's perspective of Julie a lot more and how much he searches into her then it moves on to the opening sequence with the Canterbury I think that is so well done the whole Canterbury scene that so you have the book so I'll just mention TV show I love the TV version because it's just a, it's just a shocking twist it's just like missiles hit him whoa but what I love about the book is the detail of time passing. So when the Canterbury gets blown up, um, you just got someone. You just got someone on the other end, just talk, counting down when the missile is going to hit. And then you have the conversation between the characters, and you get to hear what all the characters. You get to hear what Holden's thinking in this like dress, desperate time where like they can't do anything. They're going to die. I just say like every last just things like um, Naomi Shah is trying to jam the frequency, or they're trying to stop what was going to happen and it's just like the intensity of that like i said the countdown and holding his last conversation whereas in the tv series it's not as impactful because it's just sort of the talk in the morning and then it just blows up but it's the shock value in tv series really good but this i just really love the tension building up to the whole thing um holden's character in general in book this book i actually really enjoy like i i so as you know in tv show i really do like holden i think i love his character arc now he's not too massively different than his tv counterpart but the book version, you just get to see a lot more of his tactics in space. So, uh, so Holden's character was a lot of fun this, in the books, especially his bouncing off with Miller, because Miller and Holden have very two different personalities. Even though that sort of changes as the show goes on, because Holden starts to take on Miller's sort of more aggressive, aggressive roots as the show goes on. But at the start, I really love the Holden and Miller relationship. My man, my man just loves, um, my man just loves the. Space blurt out information like when he blurts out the Mars stuff and then pretty much just pretty much blames Mars for everything about the Canterbury. Doesn't really think about stuff, but he always has a very genuine he's one of a kind of sort of in the world we're in at the moment with all the backstabbing, politics and lying, manipulation. Holden's quite a nice character because that guy is just straightforward. Like if you bribed him, like it says in the box, he would just laugh at you. Um, and that's what I really love. Dynamic between the crew, Amos, every time they described Amos in the audio book, I loved it. Amos in his meaty arms. Every time it says Amos in his meaty arms. <laughs> Brilliant description of Amos. Love book Amos, love TV series Amos. I think I prefer TV series Amos. That's because I'm a bit further in. But uh, Book Amos is a lot of fun. You definitely, you definitely see a lot more of his loyalty to Naomi. But I love his, sav I just love his savageness. There was uh, something that really nice. Also, with Holden, he's a lot less Crusader in the books. So even though I would say they're very similar, the book version, TV series, I think the feels like Holden's on less like a less of a crusade, and he actually does really good decisions. Seeing his tactics, the small details with the party, seeing how much leadership he actually got, I think is just really well depicted in the books. Um, one thing I do really love about the books is there's so one of the moments I really enjoy in the TV show is when they sat down and made that lasagna. In the books, there's a lot more moments like that, and I really enjoy that. There's a lot more moments of just the crew hanging out because obviously the books have more time to do that. And it just you, I feel the relationship between the characters in the books are just so much well done. Like the romance, I can't remember too much about the romance in season one of the TV show, but the romance with Naomi and Holden is really well done. Like Naomi doesn't straight away go for him, basically calls him out that he. Of course, him out about Holden's like latching on personality, where he latch on to someone, fall in love with them, and after about two weeks, he'd be like, "No, mate, <laughs> he loses interest." I love how Naomi calls him out for that, and I love how she's like, "Oh, so now that I'm the only girl left, you've suddenly shown interest into me," and it's just like, "Oh, Naomi's a savage." I, I appreciated that as well. I think the romance was really well done with Holden. Um, Holden and Naomi as it went on. I really enjoyed the description of the belters as well, because obviously in the TV show they can't really show the belters as like. You sort of lose the like same with the people, but you get that. You know, same with the immersion. One of the big immersion points I really love about the books is that the belters look different. They speak. They obviously speak. I know they speak different TV show, but you know because they're very lanky in the books. They're tall, gravity, how things affect them. They come across a lot more alien like. So when, uh, so sort of when you watch TV series, you're like, oh, they just look normal humans. But in the books, they really put the point. They really hammer the point of how much on the outside they are. Like how how they're treated like shit. Um, they're just basically nobodies. And like I said, you get this in the TV show, but in the books, it's just so much more nails on it, and you really you're really immersed into the fact that they are just treated like for that second rate humans. Um, 
even though they're all very highly skilled, they, <coughs> they, they're at it because they live in the zero tree, they're really good at it. And they're just all fantastic engineers. And it's just like, yeah, how Earth and Mars treat them is definitely interesting. Um, you can sort of see more about, you see, you see a bit more of the APA's point of view. Uh, I also say smaller details in this are so much better. I think the smaller detail a lot easier to pick up in the books than they are on TV show. And that really helps Miller's storyline. So in Miller's storyline and TV show, you have to be on it to, to notice everything. But in the books, it's quite in your face, if you know what I mean, when it's explaining stuff. So that one of the things I took a lot more appreciation for in the books than I did the TV show was the emails. So the emails in the TV show, I did read them. There was about the, the one I'm talking about is Julie and a rocket. In the TV show, I didn't really pay too much attention to it. I was just like, oh, cool. It didn't really mean much to me. But when I was reading, the, when I was listening to it in the audiobook, it really hit home how horrible, like, how, like, blackmaily and manipulative Mao is and the mum trying to get it to come back when you're using a rocket against it. Like, saying, like, oh, we're going to take your rocket away. And you really, with small details like that, it's just like when you read the emails, you slowly get the more personality and what's really going on. Whereas if I'm just reading it on the screen, I don't know, it's a different feel to it, and it just, like I said, it just keeps helping Miller's storyline. This is why Miller's my favourite character in the books, and but not in my TV show. In the books, he's fantastic, like I say. Slowly watching him fall in love with Julie, and then really getting the vivid to how much he sees her. Like, he sees her a lot in his visions. And, like, this is a guy who's lived his life. He has a lot of regrets. He's been through a lot, and then just, like, being stuck on series... And being that cop has not helped him mentally as things have gone on. So his stuff has seen how hardcore he made him. But he speaks so much sense. It's ridiculous. Like that guy's got life lessons in buckets. Like some I might just skip ahead a little bit. But every conversation he had with Holden. Miller and Holden was just interesting. You had the sort of like viewpoint of Holden. The viewpoint of Miller. And you could see both. But I always tend to more agree with the more hardcore Miller point of view. As that's sort of my thought process as well. And I like the very super realistic route where Holden's more of the dreamer. Like stuff when it comes to like giving out information when Holden just, when Miller just rips into Holden for trying to broadcast all the information all the time, how like dangerous that actually is. And it was just like, I loved how those two bounced off each other in this. It was fantastically done. Um, one of the discussion points that someone mentioned. So I did ask, I didn't get too many, but I got a few discussion points. I asked, uh, someone asked if, when Miller starts seeing hallucinations of Julie in the same as, is it the same as Holden sees, um, does Holden see hallucinations of Miller in the third book? I'm not going to do too much talk about the other books, but in, um, in the TV show, the hallucinations are very different to me. Like the ones Miller's getting are all in his head. Um, because he builds, he builds like a false Julie. He builds it out through the cases. He's built his own perfect Julie. Um, and it's not the actual Julie, but that's his imaginary ways. Holden's is a bit more complicated. I'm not going to get too much into it because that's in book three. Um, well, not book three, but in the season three of the TV show. But yeah, I do find them very different. And Holden's is more to do with the the stuff going on on the ship. I'm not going to get too much into it, but yeah, um, I find them very different. I will jump on the Avasaral a bit. Uh, I do find having Avasaral's point of view not in the books, not too much of a different, really. I think the TV show did a good idea by adding Avasaral in the TV show because she covers a lot of the points that when the characters are thinking in their head or giving us the information in their head of Asarala pretty much covers all that on Earth and I think getting the politic way getting the politic and the world building all out the way for Earth and Mars was a massive benefit of the TV show of the TV show whereas in the books it's thought it's starting to do it now a bit more it starts to focus on Mars the politics and that lot but I think I'm glad they didn't do it in book one of The Expanse because following two characters with the amount of information it was given us was already enough. So I'm glad in the books they didn't give us Vassarala, but I'm glad in the TV show they gave us Vassarala early, especially because she's one of my favourite characters as well. So I really do like the fact how they've done stuff in the TV show. Like I said, it keeps it fresh for people who are switching in between. Like, listening to the books was a different experience from watching TV show, and I really appreciated that. Quick book and TV show comparison as well. Um, TV show obviously has the both of the music, the atmosphere, the visual visual representation of the world. Um, I actually really enjoyed Amos's character, Naomi's characters more. One thing I really love about the TV show is that you get the different point of views of like Amos, Naomi, Fred. Whereas in the books, you're 
sort of stuck with Holden and Miller. So like when they're on air, for example, we only see Holden and Miller's personality on the book, per perspective on the books. But in the TV show, we get to see Naomi and Amos's and the stuff with the kids and bits like that. So you get to see a lot more of that in the TV show. So I like the different point of views in the TV show. So it keeps it fun. And obviously we get to see the politics going on, which is sort of not shown in the books. We only get to see little bits of like when we meet in the UN ship or Mars. So I really enjoy the fact that the TV show goes into more of that we get my analog politics so we get to see more of what everyone else is we get to see more of the world's reaction to the situation than just millers and amos's and uh, millers and holden's books i love the first person perspective i love the that it's easy to pick up on little details um inner thoughts of characters the debates more screen time of all the crew hanging out just overall i enjoy the more interact why why really even though you get to see all people point of view in the books, I love the interactions with different people, like the UN ships, for example, or the Martian ships. It just seems to be a bit more interaction with everyone, because um, to cover up, like, because we don't know the, because we don't have a character to follow, so they would have like a UN, like the, um, they, like when they're chasing the the UN ship there, um, so things go down a bit differently. But yeah, with the book, but as we carry on, I think what was the next arc after the book? So we obviously get, so we have the. They go on the Martian ship, don't they? they get caught by the Martian ship. That stuff was interesting on the Martian ship. I think we got a bit more, got a bit more detail of the truth drug and just the stuff like that and how everything works. Then left, they got on the Rosinante. We didn't really have the stuff with the guys. We, um, with the when there was like the pacing was insane in the book. Like it would just go from one arc to another and it would just keep going. The pacing. I think that that's the biggest flaw of the TV show, and I don't find it a flaw. The pacing in TV show is a lot slower than the books, but the payoff in season two is really good. But I would say for the first time reading, the book is so much smoother and nicer because of the pacing. It would just go to event, to event, to event. Um, then they got off They got off Mars. I think everything on... Oh, I appreciated the change the uh, goop to bluish colour than the brownish colour they describe it in the books. It's, it just sounds disgusting in the books where it looks pretty in the TV show. <laughs> Um, yeah, so then they, everything on Eros was brutal, like, see the point of view for Miller, how much it affected Miller and Holden, how much the radiation affects everyone. So, oh yeah, another thing about little details, the corruption on Ceres made a lot more sense, so, like, obviously it mentions all the body armour getting shipped off, or the riot gear, um, or the crime rate going down, which it does show in the TV series, I just picked up on it, maybe because I'm rereading the books, I just picked on stuff a lot more, so when you see the stuff pop up when they go to... Eros, and you see the people in the body armor what was stolen and all the thugs going which i did pick up the thugs leaving but body armor and stuff was interesting so i love how like every little detail matters so even like little stories characters would talk about would come up later is quite important so i really appreciate middle storyline for that middle storyline was just a lot of fun miller's character is just very interesting and i love how he's just so real yeah um i'm not going to go through every plot point of the show because i've here all day but i definitely i will say the arcs i enjoyed were the I loved everything on Eros. Everything when they when they attacked that lab, um, when they're chasing Eros. I love the, but yeah, I could go through every plot point by beer all day. I've just realised I was like doing it. I'm like, I'm gonna be here for a while if I do that. Um, I really appreciate the science stuff is very well explained as well. So like the effects of every time they would go into quite great detail when they put the juice in them, how much the gravity, the G's affect you. Um, I like the different substances that like driver has better. So I just think like it goes quite good detail on the um, substance side and the science side in the books. The writers are really doing a good job. Like I've got to say, this show is got so many genres packed into it. It's like it's got like it's a mystery detective with Miller. It's like your space naval combat science fiction with Holden. You've got your drama. You've got your bit of romance on the side. You just I have so many genres colliding into this show politics and it's just like i don't know how the author writes it all so just the flow is so perfectly the writer did such a good job with these books i also saw a tweet of um how we changed stuff for the tv show just to keep book readers involved and i absolutely love that i think it's fantastic like i said this book was a pure joy a joy to listen to i think yeah it was just i don't know it just gave me a whole different feel to it than the books than the tv show did little details that stuff like um the whole like period molecule being launched being caught in the moon 
I don't know if I just remember details better now, but maybe I, th- I think I'm just catching on with things more because I'm rereading it over because if I watch TV show more. But it's just like it's such a well explained world, and it's just like you pick up on it's so well written. I can't I can't describe it. It's really hard to describe how well written this book is. It's so well done. It's increased my love for the show even more. It's helped with my understanding with the show even later on because a lot of stuff. A lot of one thing I love about book one of this and season one in general with the TV shows that. Everything we learn in this season or book is relevant still in season like three, four, three, four. It's not something where they just drop storylines or storylines feel pointless because a lot of stuff is still relevant to the point where I'm at in the TV show as well. And that's one thing I really love about the um, experience of rereading these books is that when I'm watching TV show now, I'm picking up different stuff or like realizing stuff or bringing up stuff from earlier on in the show, especially a lot to do with the Pokemon Cue. And it's just like, yeah, and just from reading book one, it's just how relevant all that information is, even through, what, two two books down the line it's going to be, because I think book season three covers book three. Sorry, I'm really bad at these discussion videos. It's quite hard. To, I, I like to just talk. I, could, I just keep talking, and I, I realise I'm not really sticking to a point, am I? I'm sort of just going all over the place. But this is why I call it a discussion and not a review, uh, because, uh, yeah, a review can be a lot shorter, and I can just go over things quickly. I think one of the, the big one, one, of the, one of the beautiful things I enjoyed about the book is the diversity of characters. So, uh, because of the amount, what I really love about this is that the show's set in space, but it feels like you you interact with so many different cultures, different people, people with different point of views. It's all fantastically done. It feels it generally feels like they made space feel like separate countries because Eros, Ceres, Earth, um, and Eopia bases, the where Fred's base. They all feel so different and they have different cultures and beliefs and everything going on in there. And it makes it just makes the world feel so big for a show set in space. Especially because it's not it's not most sci fi shows you rely on different race. You rely on different races, so different alien species to give you that diversity, different planets. But somehow somehow in this show, in our solar system just in the one solar system of a of our solar system. They managed to make the culture so diverse and just everything so different from each other. So, like, you have your Martians very different, your Earth's very different. So, every Earth who are like you see politics very, mainly quite professional most of the th- most of the time. You have Martians who are very like you, hive-like, um, all for one cause, work together, um, quite an understanding. A lot of people. You have your PA your extremists. But what I love about the APA is like two factions. You have your extreme groups. You more people are just all about the passion. And then you have your ones like Fred's group, um, where it's just like they want to make the APA a power on the world stage to make themselves a superpower along with Earth and Mars. And then you have the cultures in that, like the Mormons, and then you have Eros, people on Eros, and then just like the different types of. Then you have yeah Earth people who are lived on like in space all their life, so they come across as more. Uh, belters but they're still quiet as outers instead of inners and it's just like you got all these different cultures going on in this story and i think that's a really cool detail of how he's managed to make this world just feel so big in such a small it's so weird because i say space is small but i'm just saying compared to other sci-fi shows this is quite a small it's quite small because it's just set in a solar system you know i mean not set like all over the place like other shows shows are done um I love how like they very explain everything. There's nothing magical about the show. Like when Eros is moving, Naomi goes into great detail saying like it's not perfect. It's still wasting energy. It's still going by physics and stuff like that. And I actually really enjoy that. It's just like there's nothing magical in this show, and I find the Proto Molecule to be such an interesting villain of the sh- villain of the show. Um, how the Proto Molecule. I really enjoyed how they described the Proto Molecule. How it's just trying to adapt with its situation. Um, how like it it had a plan before humans and then obviously humans obviously it got trapped and then humans have been made and then like it's sort of just trying to adapt with its environment while taking information of all the humans and it sort of doesn't it's not perfect it's trying to just adapt with the world it's got to deal with now before it completes its mission um fascinating 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 show uh amos's character just as interesting as before just a little little details of amos with like how angry he gets with people who treat kids wrong, um, being that pillar, he's very pillar of the group. He's a great engineer. He's always there. Um, I love how he slowly gains a bit more respect for Holden um, over time. Um, it's just the diversity of the cast is good.
And it's always uh, one thing I always that I always said in a TV show, but the book really does feel like a video game with some of the choices it gives. Like my god, some of the choices are, you, they're so well done and built up too that you're like, oh, I could go that way, but I could also see that way. Oh, that's definitely the renegade option, and that's the good option. And I always love that about show. It's always this show always is always testing your moral books. Are is always testing your morals. It's like I would technically go down that route. Miller's going down, but I can also see where like Holden's coming from. But I would sort of go down. It's just that it really makes me think about my morals there. And I like actually quite a bad person because as we know, Miller's just a savage man. Man just goes around shooting, shooting his guns, guns blazing quite a lot. Um, even though it's really interesting when it, like it goes into Miller's mind about killing, like when he got his, did his first kill and it went into all that, and then Holden's first kill and how he was dealing. Oh, because it, it goes into detail about like Holden. Holden's kill. He always mentions that it's different killing someone that is just looking at beep lights on the screen go up, disappear. Because he was in ship in the navy, so when he killed people, he'd just see lights go when he would find missiles and stuff. Whereas when he actually first killed someone, he was just how it went into how different that was when he first killed physically killed someone compared to seeing bleeps on a light disappear. It was fascinating. Some of the stuff in this book is good. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna try and structure the next time I do this a bit better. Um, so I'm so with book two, I'm actually writing down notes and my opinions as it's going down. Whereas book one, I didn't do that. I just sort of immersed myself in a book and I was listening to it. I didn't actually plan on doing a discussion video for the book one. I was just going to do it at the end of each episode of the Expanse. But I think discussions will be good. So I'm hoping in book two, like I say, it's discussions me rambling. I'm not doing a fucking written review. Where I'm sitting there writing about it. But with this, it's just me discussing it. And I'm sorry for all my points were a bit everywhere and I just kept jumping to point to point. I just want to get out how much I'm enjoying this. Um, so I'm going to call this more of a ramble than a discussion because it's just me rambling on. Um, so I might just do a quick intro. To summarise my thoughts of the books, the books are fantastic. It's a great expansive universe um, with a big story to tell and that definitely shows in TV show as well. So if you look for that Game of Thrones itch of a big world, this touches it. it touches on so many different genres and nails it pacing of the books is fantastic i love um it never felt slow or boring there was always something going off on the world or something going on in the moment even with the slow moments though when the crew is hanging out and stuff you just really appreciate it because you really get to know the crew's personality absolutely flawless cast all very different backgrounds all have very different stories going on different experiences different opinions and watching the opinions of Clyde and how different how um, how they interact and different point of views really makes you question your morals especially with Miller and Holden how they're very different opposite offences opposite opposites to each other but it's also enjoyable to see like Holden's character sort of slowly go that way and Miller's even go that way for example um, Proto Molecule is a fantastic enemy um it's adaptive it's always changing it never feels the same it's very interesting um now if i had the choice now would i have read the, say i went doing reactions and you gave me the choice would i read the book first or would i watch the tv series first i'd say if i had a choice and i wasn't doing reactions i would read the books first or listen to the audio books and then watch the tv show because i think the benefits are a lot more because what i like about the tv show is that from reading the book and then looking at the TV show now, they changed they changed quite a few things in the TV show to keep you on your toes. So I think if you read the books, the TV show still got a lot to offer. But because I've watched TV show first, there's left to offer for the books. If you know what I mean, like there's a lot to offer still, like first person perspective and stuff like that. But you know, that I'm just meaning more more wise. I think the books, the TV show gives a bit very different experience. So I think watching that second will add, just add. So yes, yeah, so I want to do reactions. I'm obviously never going to read ahead of the TV show because I want to do reactions to it and I want to keep fresh. I think reactions are more interesting if I don't know what's going to go on, what's not going on. So I will only read the books up to where the TV show finishes and then I'll go along. But if I had the choice and I wasn't doing reactions, I probably would continue the books first and then watch the TV show. Um, I think book two so far, if you want quick thoughts on that, is so much, it's just such an improvement. Uh, I'm really loving the narrator as well. His voice range has increased and he's just making me so much more immersed than he was in the first book. Even though that was already quite immersive, the second book so much more immersive. I highly recommend this. I don't think you'd be watching this video if you haven't seen the series, but I do recommend it. If you enjoy sci-fi in general or just any genre, this, sh this show has it. If you just enjoy a story with great characters in a big world, you'd enjoy The Expanse. Hopefully you guys enjoyed me just rambling about the series. If you did, make sure you leave that like 
and yeah thanks for supporting these videos and the expanse guys i really do appreciate it